Hi, everybody. Welcome to the, our next episode of Journey to the Parliament, where we're going to be arriving at the Parliament August 14th through 18th, 2023. Um, you can find out more information. Go to the front page of Corellian.com. We have a lot of things happening. But today we're going to talk to the Right Reverend Sir Michael Neal. How are you doing, sir? Hello, Sir Ed. Thanks for the and, opportunity. And uh, so uh, the Right Reverend Michael Neal uh, has been leading fundraising efforts in other parts for a long time, including you know, helping us get housing and other types of items at the 2015 Parliament, as well as the 2018 was very involved with a lot of the backdoor stuff. But what can, can you tell us what, uh, a little bit about what the Parliament you, it means to you? Well, I'll tell you back, uh, uh, the very first Parliament I attended was in Salt Lake City. And uh, it was quite an experience because I'd never really as a pagan, gone to a interdenominational, I guess is the best way to describe it. And it was a new experience because generally when you are in a certain, uh, I'll say uh, religion or uh, uh, denomination or something like that, you tend just to stick together. But here was an opportunity where people from all over the world, and, Truly, people come from all over the world. In the case of Salt Lake City and later uh, to Toronto, uh, they were my two experiences. And what I found really, really amazing about it is how people just so easily intermingled and you were able to meet new people just from sometimes standing in line or waiting at the entrance to a, uh, a workshop that was going to be beginning. But by far, the biggest, biggest thing about the parliament is how many workshops and uh, I guess I, I call them rituals, but presentations that uh, happen, it seems like 24 hours a day, because you really come back quite tired from the parliament. But they start early in the morning uh, with workshops and different presentations. Uh, uh, I, I know that the uh, Native Americans, they have uh, early morning, like opening up of their their approach to the parliament. And you have to be an early riser to catch some of these uh, workshops and presentations. Uh, but I, I guess the best way I would think of it, I've never been to an Olympics, you know, a worldwide Olympics, but when you go into this massive and they need a massive convention center for the amount of people that attend it, is you see people from all walks of life in different garb of their traditional native clothing and things like that. And I think that, gee, this, what would it be like in an Olympic village? Well, uh, maybe the Olympic village would be much more diverse because there's a hundred some countries there. I don't know how many people come from how many different countries to the parliament, but. It, uh, to me, it was just gave a flavor of what it would be like to be in an Olympic village. So, and you know, uh, you have to have stamina because the venues are so large, and you do a lot of walking. You start at the entrance, and then when you go through your book or your app on your telephone, you say, "Okay, I need to get over to here." And fortunately, they have plenty of maps around and stuff like that. So. It, it was good. Unfortunately, for both Salt Lake City and Toronto, I was a bit under the weather. Very rare for me, but uh, I probably was only able to participate maybe in 25% of what I planned to do. But still, I got the benefit of it. I don't regret it. I'm looking forward to Chicago, uh, hoping that, you know, uh, things are different when I get there and I, I feel great. Uh, I know. Chicago being the home base for you and a few other people that are going will have that will have that advanced knowledge of what to expect in the city, mm -hmm. where to stay, what to do, and uh, what how to use the systems that are there, whether it's the bus system, train system, or whatever. So, oh, absolutely, and, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but in, in in Utah, Salt Lake City, the seventh convening of the World Parliament of Religion. Um, your wife, uh, Stephanie Neal, the right reverend, or the most reverend, got a sense, she got an opportunity because you talked about the robes and everything. And because Carolians are a bit daring, uh, you guys came out in all the robes and everything else, and they gave us a position to walk that parliament. And it was a, a, a monument. I even got on the news and everything. 
Um, can you talk about how you felt like that? that oh, you're always a great supporter. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was you know, uh, a very fun, fun night and exciting because all the people that were Krillians were there. We were all in our robes. It was, was that the opening session? It was the, the opening session, the great opening session. And uh, for Stephanie to have been selected, you know, and maybe because of all the color we have in our robes and the stoles and the tabards mm -hmm. and all that. Uh, so she, she walked and she was, she told me after she was walking amongst uh, an indigenous tribe. She was like in that section of the procession. And she said they were just a hoot. Everyone was just so friendly. And, you know, she had an opportunity as she was walking through there. People were, you know, uh, waving to her and, and things like that, who identified that, oh, now here comes my belief system. Oh, mm -hmm. here comes, you know, so it was, it was, I was so proud of her. And it was an opportunity to, I guess, show the thousands and thousands of people that the Korean tradition is here, it's viable, and it's worldwide. And that leads us, I guess, to discussion right now. So, uh, we're leading a major effort to, to go to Chicago, August 14th through the 18th. We're very fortunate. We've already had 40 people register under our group rate. Great. Yeah, well, Great. that's amazing. That uh, surpasses our last time. And uh, we're going to provide sort of things. But in order to do so, we want greater representation. And uh, so we're raising funds. And can you talk a little bit about the, what we're raising front funds for? Well, I think the the main focus, it, there's a overall budget that we're hoping to get to, but on everyone's mind is the opportunity to be a supporter or sponsor at the uh, Chicago Parliament of World Religions, in which we become recognized as one of the people that are supportive of the, of the uh, convention. And it takes a lot of money, you know, and that's why we're doing it the fundraising. Additionally, if we can hit that goal, then there's the idea that we'd like to maybe set up a table there uh, that allows us to introduce our belief systems to others. Although it's not a place where you're looking to, oh, well, let's try and get these people into our religion. All these people that go to there are fully established. But what it does, it helps to transmit to them or through conversation and through uh, maybe articles that we'll have available for them to read or watch on video uh, to understand what our tradition is all about, what our belief system is. So often there's a, a negativity that other denominations or uh, faiths would put on our belief because, hey, their belief is that there's only one God well, our belief is there's only one God, but it's manifested in many, many different ways to different people. You know, uh, I, I guess uh, Lord Don, one of the best uh, images I've seen is this giant diamond in the sky. And basically it's how you see, you see the creator, how you see deity, how you see, you know, your God. And just like me, I am a, father, I'm a husband, I'm a son, I'm an in-law, and all that, and sort of like, I, I'm, a, I'm a diamond, and people see me from different ways, and that's how our belief system is that it's great for you to worship or, uh, yeah, worship your identity of God in your way, in deity. I, I, I actually like prefer deity because it has a more, a more robust sound to it that it's, uh, more of a, a feminine name to me and that's how our our belief system works that in the beginning there was primordial deity so so i i do find it interesting because from my experience of the booths the number one product they sell to and that you have number one people to come buy through to a lot of times are librarians these interface librarians who are picking up books for their schools their universities their, oh. their church temples and things of the nature because it's one of the opportunities to really get a a broad interfaith education and everybody brings their books and they, you know, it's not the idea that you're right. We're not trying to convert other people, but definitely it is good that if we get into those libraries where children, college students, especially college students and interfaith libraries and go, well, I've never heard of this before. Let me look it up. 
And so that's a big thing. Uh, it is a big thing. And as it is, we have a number of books that are the basis for the Curlian tradition, the, the degree system, plus a book on ritual and theory and living the Wiccan life. But then many Curlian authors have put together many times from the source of their second degree projects or whatever that they, mm -hmm. they've taken that and they've expanded upon it. And so I'll mention this at this time is that we have those books available mm -hmm. at our fundraising site. A hundred percent of the sale price goes to the project to raise money for the parliament. They've all been donated by the authors a hundred percent. So there's no costs that we had to cover. It's a hundred percent pure donation for the uh, parliament project. And we're hoping to get more items in there. Uh, mm -hmm. We have, you know, some ideas in mind, but there's some jewelry. Uh, we have a, uh, it's a great bag. It's a, a satchel that when you're at either a pagan pride day or at a festival, a, a fall festival, it's a great little heavy duty satchel with the word peace on it. Uh, because certainly we promote peace. The parliament promotes peace. Uh, it's not necessarily their theme for this coming up year, but it's still very much a part of their being is peace. So let me go ahead and mention another reason for strong representation this time to, to kind of just show that we're there. And uh, we've been working with all sorts of pagan groups. We, our group rate uh, wasn't just Corellians. We've had members of the ATC. We've had members of COG. Uh, we even have the Byron, Byron Ballard is amongst our contingency, you know, so that out there. And so we have, a, uh, we have, um, you know, some of the leadership, we've have um, Lady Belladonna, plus all a lot of, you know, Lady Belladonna ATC. So we're a cooperative group, but this idea of creating, you know, this idea of diversity and representation is important. Uh, I think it's important, and even though it may have a cost, I think, Having our name up and, and available to people to see shows us that we're part of the interfaith. We are working towards it. Because this time, let's talk about the theme really quick. Defending freedom and call to conscience. Let me get it right. Call to conscience. They're calling the religious groups to conscience. And they wanted to talk about defending human rights and defending freedom. Defending freedom and human rights is the thing. And so that's a very different sort of, uh, for me, that's a little different shift to the parliament. Yeah, so can you tell me what a little bit what you're thinking that that means to you to be amongst that type of group? Well, you know, I have to admit, I, I no way want to get political in our discussion here, but there is, to me, throughout the world, a, a, a strong pressure on freedom, uh, mm -hmm. where the focus is so much has been more freedom, more freedom. Now there's this tendency through here again, I don't want to get political. Uh, there's this tendency to take away those freedoms. We certainly saw it expressed recently in the U.S. with mm -hmm. the Supreme Court decisions. It's not a case, that's not just about abortion. It was about abortion, but what it's about is women's rights to their own model, body autonomy. You know, that if they take away, you can't do this, you can't do that, that's taken away freedoms. It's the first time that we've had freedoms removed and, and with a warning that there could be more. So to me, it's very timely. It's as though the parliament chose that, chose that uh, theme for this year uh, by looking to the future of what, what could be happening. And it's happening not just in America, it's freedoms are being uh, challenged throughout the world uh democracy I think, I think it's quite deliberate in the face of what is now it looks like a return to totalitarianism a return to authoritarianism uh, uh, realm and in 2015 the parliament was dedicated to women's rights and recently put out a statement uh lady phyllis crop made it and her task force has made a uh, leading so wiccans are leading this effort on a worldwide basis so i think that's the other reason that the corellians really want to go is to show that we are supportive of not just our leaders, but like Lady Phyllis Karat and other leaders who are out there. Um, Starhawk, Lady Star, you know, the great Starhawk and others who are participants in this process. 
are out there. We want to let them know. And we're, we are definitely global so that, you know, we have some of that energy. Yeah, I, I think our participation in that is important. We, as a, as a group, or as a tradition, are very non-judgmental. We are open to, you know, people's equal rights. We're open to the equality of uh, men and women and as well as whatever their sexual uh, focus may be, you know, uh, how they identify. That is not a problem in our tradition. And I think by having representatives there that uh, say uh, encompass that, uh, it, it also helps that here you can be outside the norm. And I say norm meaning yeah, you know, so much of the control and the freedom they want to do is keep men as men and women as women and only define, you know, in two terms, whereas there are many, many uh, ways to be identified as a human out there. So, and I think and equally so, let's go ahead and talk about it. Sometimes it is also race. It's also ethnics. It's also, you know, fractions. I mean, we're talking about not just in America, but in India and other spaces. And one of the things I think we want, I do want to talk about, and I think we will, will be witch hunts. I mean, that hasn't really been talked at the parliament very much. And those are still occurring. So that's a sticky way. It's going to be, it's going to be an interesting one. I think it's going to be very intense. It's going to be at the McCormick Center, August 14th through the 18th, which is a huge, the largest convention center still just by a hair. I know your city's racing for it. Atlanta wants to be the biggest one. They're building. Um, but it is the largest uh, convention center, indoor convention center in the country. And they're taking the main hall. So they're expecting, a, uh, they, they've got to be expecting more people. I think they want to be more representative. And Chicago is known for its num numerous religious movements. At the same time, it's a bit of a sticky wicket there because we're having, because that city is also having problems with you know, finding itself within this new world that we're finding coming out of COVID. Now, we haven't mentioned 2020, uh, 2021. I was there. That was a computerized one. It was very interesting, but it didn't encompass, I think, as much as this one will encompass. I think this is going to be a very strong and powerful movement. Yeah, I, out of necessity, uh, of course, things were done online, but without a doubt, it's when you're not there with people, it's totally different. Uh, you know, if a uh, parent tried to raise a child via video, it would be a whole different experience than if they were raising them in person. So uh, I, I think being able to get back together and live and be able to just spontaneously talk to people that you come across and share, you know, share your beliefs and listen to their beliefs, I, I think that goes a long way uh, to building up the power for freedom. I think so. And that's going to be great. And so we want to be there as best we can. And that does require doing some fundraising to help our, you know, this, this is a big investment into defending freedom and religious things. This is where our community defends. And they can go to Corellian.com and there's a link right there to the button. I right on the homepage. Huh? That's right there on the homepage. Right on top. Uh, I think if people still want to register, we have someone who's tied in pretty close with the parliament and the administration at the parliament that can advise uh, Reverend Lori. Reverend Lori has done an amazing job being an ambassador and she's, uh, she's taking her own journey to the parliament. She will be in Chicago for the Chicago Pagan Pride representing the Corellian tradition and our, our efforts there. So I'm looking forward to that. And, and when is that? That when is, is that? September 24th. Or September 25th and Jacksonville Pride and Pride will be September 24th. And so, yeah. And then October 1st, she'll also be at Nashville. So we'll be a Nashville Pagan Pride. Oh, very good. And all very of these good. places you can drop in donation for us. You know, we'll have a donation jar for the parliament as well. Yes, please, please do that. I mean, these, it, it's the, the fundraising, the focus is so much on being able to support the parliament as a group of people who want to support and sponsor, you know, mm -hmm. to help defray the cost, defray the cost of, everyone pays a price to go, but the ultimate cost uh, in maintaining the parliament 
in the after years and all that, that's very important too. So as a sponsor. Yeah, I've never gone to a parliament, the early parliaments when we went, we never knew if they were gonna be held again. Mm -hmm. 93 was not intended to be a duplicated event. People don't realize that it was not intended to be duplicated. It took six years before they did another one. And that was in South Africa. And then I go, wow, that doesn't sound like that. Then 2004, another five years to do 2004, which was uh, Barcelona. And then 2009. So if you're saying, oh, I'll wait for the next one. There's never been a surety that there'll be the next one. And then after that, it was 2015. Now, in the modern age, they did the 2018 one, they did 21 and 2023. Um, so we're very much seeing, and we're seeing a little bit of a speed up, but there's no guarantee there'll be another parliament in the world. So if you don't go to these, and they're all unique, and I'm really grateful I've shared some of that with you uh, and others on this. So Yes, I, I think that it, the likelihood of them continuing to get together is because the diversity it's it's being a, you know people want to share they want to be a part and knowledge about other belief systems uh, rather than saying only my way and we're the highway you know that's just those that are open to this millennia uh, that we can coexist without a problem and and for Corellians that's really vital because we are in all sorts of unusual places. You know, people wouldn't expect to find us. We're in the Philippines. We're in South Africa. We have people and we, you know, we want to be able to support them. And I think that's the last reason why we need to go as Corellians is that we can make connections in these other countries and these other places with leadership. In case our own people get in trouble, we can get help. We can talk to them. I mean, this is a, this is a long-term safety net as well for our own people. And, other pagans, and, and in, in turn, for those groups to come to us and say, hey, we're, we're, we need your help. That's what interface is about. So we can be of assistance regardless of the religion because the real religion that we're all practicing or attempting to, I think, is love is, is love and, and, and loving each other. So I think that's- and, and acceptance, acceptance that you have a belief, I have a belief and it's okay. You know? And as long as love and peace is at the center of that, I think that's what I think the parliament is always trying to propagate. Yes. So- Last thing, so Corellian.com, we've mentioned that. So other than that, do you think of that, how else can we support you in, in this mission? Well, there again, I think that the, uh, the type of things that we offer uh, needs to be broad because uh, a number of books, some people may, okay, I have those books, but maybe they want, they're looking for something else. That's why we thought of the uh, satchel. I mm -hmm. have a couple ideas for other products that you might think of as like branding products or so. But my thought is that if we end up with a vendor table at the parliament, that it might be, you know, looking for things that could be people want to take home with them, okay. you know, as, as a reminder of the parliament. So uh, we probably have to get our committee. We have a whole team of people mm -hmm. and we probably, uh, as we're getting to the one year mark away, we probably should maybe uh, gather the troops together more frequently to see where we stand. I'm, I'm so excited about this. So thank you for talking with me today. My pleasure. And uh, we'll be back with you before this is all said and done. So we're, we're still out there. And so watch for the journey to the parliament and how we're all working together. And Corellian.com is the place where you can go get some of these great items as well as be truly supportive. If you can't make it yourself, support our, you know, support the diversity that we're trying to bring. And thank you, thank sir. You, sir. Thank you, and, sir. Uh, until next time, we'll be back with more Journeys to the Parliament.